my name is uh, Professor Arif Arekar and uh, as you all know, quite a few of you I'm sure, that I am a professor of neurology and I'm still practicing and teaching neurology. But my passion is for traveling and uh, I've done quite a few things in this world, crossing the uh, Arctic Circle into areas near the North Pole and then the South Pole the uh, Antarctic uh, or the Southern Ocean or Antarctica. Today I'll be describing something in Southeast Asia. And this is, again, I've done this before as well, the little country called Philippines. And uh, I'll take you straight into Manila. And from Manila, we took a flight to the city of Tagbilaran. Now, Tagbilaran is uh, a small uh, capital of the province of Bohol and everything is happening in central Philippines. My interest has been to explore the uh, wildlife wherever I can and while I'm doing that obviously I also look at the wonders of the world whichever way I can do that. So here in Bohol we have uh, three interesting things that I wanted to explore on this particular occasion with a friend of mine who has always been kind to be with me. Uh, so they were the Chocolate Hills, the Philippine Tarsier Sanctuary, the Lobok River Cruise, which we couldn't do, but of course, most of all, the Boreke Beach, which is one of the most beautiful beaches in Philippines. And it was ranked as a top beach quite a few years ago, and it won the competition as well. So we landed in Tagbiliran, the capital of Bohol. Now Bohol is a heaven of tropical natural beauty. The coastline of the island is skimmed by gentle coves and of course the white sand beaches I'm always looking forward to. Now Bohol is famous as I've already told you for these three things, chocolate is the Tazias and of course some heritage which I was able to not see actually, miss them and they are sites and old stone churches. So after landing in Tegbiliran, we uh, the first thing we went to do was to go to the small town of Kurila. Since uh, most of these videos that I make are for the information of the young travelers, let me add that Bohol is the main island of the Bohol province and this includes almost 75 smaller islands. The island lies southeast from Cebu land or Cebu island and southwest of what we call the Leyte Island and in the central Visavis region, central Philippines. It is oval shaped and is the 10th largest of the Filipino archipelago. For the young travelers, more information. Now in Bohol, you can go dolphin watching and whale watching. And of course, uh, the best seasons to visit this place are from March to June. Uh, from a Tagbilaran city to Korilla, where the sanctuary of the Tazias is, it takes you almost like 14 minutes and you go through the Sikatuna and Lobok Road and reach there the Philippine Tazir Sanctuary. The Tazir Foundation where we reached uh, is the Philippine Tazir Foundation which is incorporated and this is to tell you it's a non-profit, non-stock corporation based in, as you know, Tegbilaran city, Bohul. It was established in 1996 to conserve, promote, research, and establish a sanctuary for the Philippine Tarzir. It is an entirely private sector initiative but has a strong support from two leading organizations in conservation and ecotourism. So to ensure the continued existence of Philippine Tarzir, the foundation is attempting to bring tourism to the province of Bohul in a way that it is ecologically friendly to the Philippine Tarsiers. So after spending some quality time and really enjoying the smallest primate the world has ever known, we moved on out of Kurila, the sanctuary, to another uh, very, very interesting place, one of the wonders of the world called the uh, Chocolate Hills. And this is about uh, a one, one hour, 20 minute journey from Kurila to the Chocolate Hills and uh, it's about uh, 45 kilometers 
and you can go by bus we went by a taxi and we were at the hills so we finally reached uh, the uh, chocolate hills of bohul now the word chocolate hills is derived from their appearance in summer where the lush green grass turns into a chocolate brown color the exact number of haycock hills has never actually been calculated or recorded it has been est- estimated that the island of bohul is home to up to 1800 of these dome shaped hills there is no scientific explanation that the hills were formed from coral limestone uplifted from the sea and the, these slowly eroded and formed by the elements into the present shape the area was designated a national geological uh, monument by philippines in 1988 and nominated for unesco world heritage status in 2006 like i've said these uh, dome shaped hills are actually made up of grass covered limestone during the dry season the grass covered hills dry up and turn chocolate brown this transforms the area into seemingly endless rows of what they look like hershey's chocolate kisses so next we drove to uh, the panglao island in cebu and this is just about 17 kilometers from uh, uh, tagbilaran and uh, one can easily drive there so a uh, little about bohul uh, bohul is a uh, an island that is definitely in the list of must visit places in the philippines it's a small island yet packed with natural beauty and adventurous things to do now, panglao is uh, is located in bohul and it's where the most of the world class resorts are located now bohul's international airport is also located here most tourists arrive in panglao so here's hoping this ultimately is the best little uh, statement about panglao island so the island of uh, panglao uh, is almost like 91 uh, km square and I, like i've said it is within the bohol province and comprises of two municipalities it is located southwest of the island of bohol and east and south of cebu it has uh, a terrain that ranges from plain hilly to mountainous regions Of course it's made up of uh, what we call the Mary Bojok limestone the youngest of the limestone units found in the western area of Bohol it is a popular tourist destination in the Philippines and includes several small islands now Pangla is known for its biodiversity and in fact what people say is that Pangla marine biodiversity is uh, alone it is more biodiverse than Japan and even the Mediterranean Sea So that night we spent in Elona and uh, had some quality time on the Elona beach as well. Now the Elona beach is one of the most famous tourist spots in Bohol province, Philippines because of the white sand and the rocky cliffs. The beach is located near a house reef where corals and color fishes can be seen even without the diving. It is a popular scuba diving and snorkeling spot situated less than 2 miles from the new Bohol Panglao International Airport. So the Panglao beach is uh, located uh, just uh, before the Panglao town. It is situated around 20 kilometers from the port of Tagbilaran and about 2 kilometers from the new Panglao Bohol International Airport. Of course it is accessible by sea road by car motorbike air, airport bus or whatever you want. Uh, Alona Beach is rather small as it spans less than 1 km of white powder sand surrounded by low rocky cliffs. So after spending uh, a night at the uh, Alona resort we went to the Tagbilaran ferry port took a ferry which took us 2 hours and we reached Cebu Cebu Robinson's Galleria. Of course uh, the trip of ours the cruise was quite good the uh, cruise boat was very well managed disciplined good service on board and it was a very pleasant journey from tagbilaran to the to cebu from the uh, cebu ferry port we went to the macton cebu international airport to fly to katikilan so we took this flight from the Cebu International Airport into Katakalan. Several airlines 
go from Cebu to Catacalan like the Philippines Airlines, the Cebu Pacific Air, the Philippines Air Asia, the Philippines Airlines and it takes about an hour, in, in some cases an hour and 10 minutes. It's a very very short flight. So uh, we landed in uh, Catacalan after an hour's uh, flight and uh, now uh, let me tell you there are, there are two, two uh, airports uh, here um, Catacalan. One is the uh, Calibo International Airport and the other is uh, Godofido Ramos Airport. Now this is very important between the two Catacalan Airport is much closer and provides a more convenient access to Boracay. In fact, even travelers coming from Calibo Airport still need to pass through Catacalan because the jetty port, the jump off point to Boracay is located just a short distance from Catacalan Airport. So from the Catacalan Airport, uh, you can take, a, if you're on a budget, you take a tricycle uh, ride or you can take a taxi, just uh, a couple of minutes from there to the uh, Catacalan jetty from where you will take what we call the pump boat uh, to the Burake Islands and the cost is very 100 to 75 so that is easy you have to stand at the counter and get the tickets so we finally got into Burake our dream destination and uh, we were lodged into Nigi Nigi Resort and now this uh, Nigi Nigi Resort is quite a beautiful resort if you don't mind the pool option, this is the place to stay. The beach is right in front of the resort. Even you can have breakfast right in front. The location is very good. The room is of course quiet. The price is quite reasonable. And included breakfast, you should stay here if you don't need a pool. This is what I'm trying to say. And if I go back, I'll again want to stay in the Nigi Nigi Resort. Great location. So there are good reasons to stay here because it is the center of the STN2. They have a great restaurant which is the best bar to be at night. Centrally located at the best part of the beach. So most restaurants are nearby with option of going cheap to expensive. And the best thing is that you can go back and forth with the water from the room throughout the day. You can take a dip while you wait and uh, for the free breakfast to be served, there's so much to be offered. There's a lot of plantation, the place is foresty, well maintained and absolutely amazing. So having, uh, so we spent almost like two nights or two nights at the uh, resort and there were three full days. So talking about the Nigi Nigi Resort, of course it is the best spot on station two as I told you. It's unique large native rooms pretty much located at the beachfront but still you feel isolated and private which is the best thing. So now coming to the beautiful uh, Borake beach. Now uh, the island of Borake, it comprises of uh, the municipality of Malay and it is in the Eklan province. It is run by the island Borake International Task Force. Now apart from its white sand beaches that you can see on the video, Borake is also famous for being one of the world's top destinations for relaxation. As of 2013, it was emerging among the top destinations for tranquility and nightlife. One important thing is that Burake was awarded as the 2012 best island in the world by the international travel magazine Travel and Leisure. In 2014, the resort was at the top of the best island in the world, listed by, published by international magazine Condé Nast Traveler. In 2016, Burake headed the magazine's list of top 10 destinations to watch. In 2018, the Philippine government decreed a six-month closure of the island for tourists to undertake a major renovation works, especially for the savage system, which had become obsolete and insufficient. It reopened in October 2018 with a set of new rules meant to address a variety of issues. Now, describing the Borokia Island, which is located off the northwest corner of uh, Pane Island and belongs to the western of Yas Island group, of Philippines. The island is approximately seven kilometers long, dog bone shaped with the narrowest spot being less than one kilometer wide and has a total land area of almost like 10.32 square kilometers. So describing the uh, beach further, the south facing Kagban beach is located across a small strait from the jetty port at Katikilan from where we came in on Pane Island and the Kagban jetty port serves as the Borakay's main entry and exit point during most of the year. 
when wind and sea condition degrade east facing uh, then things change they, there is an alternate entry and exit now borak has two primary tourism beaches white beach and bula bok beach are located on opposite side of the islands narrow central area white beach faces westward bula bok beach faces eastward iron also has several other beaches he also went to poka beach which is another beautiful place to be in so on one of these days we took a boat ride to the poka shell uh, beach which is uh, a beautiful beach absolutely glamorous and gorgeous and uh, it is called the poka shell beach because bead like objects can be found on some of the beaches like in hawaii each one of these beach worn apex of cone snail shell a kind of seashell from a sea snail these are found there and they are naturally occurring and uh, a hole in the middle of these rounded worn shell fragment these natural beads are made into necklaces so very very interesting now this beach is absolutely amazing it has this lined up palm trees it has that turquoise water turquoise water has a long stretch of white sand and uh, you can spend hours here uh, under the, the sun and uh, this place is uh, something that you can never forget so we spend a quality time me and my friend on this pokashal beach and then we return to borake and of course then after two good quality days on this beautiful uh, beach of borake we flew back via manila to pakistan i hope you've uh, liked this video it may have become quite long but we need to describe it because we need youngsters to go there and see the beauty of these uh, central philippine islands and what they have to offer uh, if you have liked this uh, documentary do subscribe to our channel